The Blended Video Series is based on an excellent sermon series entitled Blended, presented by Pastor Lance Lowell of Neighborhood Church in Modesto, California. This sermon series is a call for unity in the body of Christ. The theme of this video series is found in the Gospel of John. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. Pastor Lowell gave me his sermon notes and encouraged me to design a video series. The episodes that you will see are a collaboration between Pastor Lowell and myself. I hope you enjoy this production. What's wrong? My iPhone won't connect to the internet. Maybe my tablet will work. No, that's down also. I know, I'll go to my computer. What is going on here? My computer also will not connect to the internet. I don't know why. But I lost my internet connection. Everything is down. What am I to do? I can't follow my Facebook friends. And I can't read my messages on Instant Messenger. I feel lost since I'm no longer connected. It's amazing how much our lives depend on being connected. Should we fail to get that connection, we feel frustrated and isolated. We cannot make a phone call, send a text, check the news, get sports scores, and we cannot watch TV on the go because an internet connection is required. Worse yet, we cannot tell everyone what we are doing or find out what everyone else is doing. Connectivity has changed. But more than that, it has been redefined. It has been redefined by the internet and social media. Mark Zuckerberg, the founder of Facebook, at the inaugural Community Summit of Facebook users on June 22, 2017, referred to Facebook as the new church and his social network can fulfill the role that religion once did in giving people a sense of community. Zuckerberg thinks that Americans are desperately seeking for something anything that can unify their lives. He believes that the church no longer fulfills this role. He thinks Facebook will become the new community for the millennial generation. In January of 2017, Zuckerberg traveled the United States talking to several religious and community leaders to study the community influence provided by these leaders. He learned that people who go to church are more likely to volunteer and give to charity, not just because they're religious, but because they're part of a community. Zuckerberg also said, a church doesn't just come together. It has a pastor who cares for the well-being of their congregation, 
make sure they have food and shelter. A Little League team has a coach who motivates the kids and helps them hit better. Leaders set the culture, inspire us, give us a safety net, and look out for us. Zuckerberg understands the importance of community and connection. He believes that Facebook can provide that community akin to a religious congregation. Facebook has now passed 2 billion users, meaning almost one-third of the global population are signed up. Zuckerberg said that the company's new focus would be to establish that community connection. No doubt, Facebook is a powerful tool. From Facebook, you could learn a lot about each one of your Facebook friends. You might learn where your friends grew up, where they live now, what job they have, and even some of their personal family adventures. You might even see pictures of their family and friends. No doubt, Facebook can provide some degree of connection, but it is not enough. Facebook does not allow you to touch my heart. You cannot truly know me until we walk together in true relationship. Should I be in the hospital? Will you visit me over Facebook? Will you hold my hand and comfort me in my grief? Facebook does not provide a true human connection. Is Facebook the path to true connection? Or is there a better way? That better way can be found in the pages of the Bible and your local community church. It can be found in Kingdom Connection. Living connected starts when I accept how God created me. Let's read. The Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. Notice that this is the first time in all the creation narrative that God looked at his creation and deemed that it was not good. Why would God say such a thing about the creation of Adam? Remember, according to Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, Adam was made in the image of God, and God abides in community and exists in connection with his heavenly realm. The issue was not with Adam. The issue was him being alone. God deemed that loneliness was not good. Therefore, he created Eve to walk with Adam. Inherent in the heart of all humankind is the need for personal connection. This is God's design. It is not good for us to dwell alone. We were created by God to be connected. The General Social Survey, a sociological study created by the University of Chicago, has found that the number of Americans with no close friends has tripled since 1985. Nearly one quarter of those surveyed indicated that they had zero close friends. The survey showed that the average number of close friends an average American had dropped 
from three to two. These statistics are especially true among the millennial generation, who has been called the lonely generation. According to Caroline Beaton, a psychology journalist for Forbes magazine, there are two reasons for growing loneliness. The first reason is that loneliness is infectious. It can spread among social groups. The second reason is the internet. We use the internet and social media to alleviate loneliness, but it only causes the infection of loneliness to spread. The internet can eventually isolate us and stunt our true relationships. We all know that what we see on social media can be trusted because people don't groom their social profiles. Yeah, right. Do we really know our Facebook friends? Do we see the real people behind the profiles? Or are we seeing only the image they want to project? Does anyone know the real you? To know the real you, you must be connected through personal relationship with a real social group. Social media is not the answer. We work so hard to groom the image we present online. But is that image the real you? We enjoy our interactions on social media. But deep down, we know that our media friends only see the person we want to project. We hide our real person from our Facebook friends because we fear that should our internet community see the real you, they may not like what they see. The internet can provide a facade of a community, but it cannot function as a real community that can touch our heart and soul. There are different ways to seek connection, but they are not the same thing as being connected in real relationship. At Neighborhood Church, we embrace the idea of being kingdom connected. But to be kingdom connected, we must acknowledge and accept the reality of God's design in us. We cannot live on faith alone. We need kingdom connection in our life. Loneliness is a great enemy to our soul. We cannot walk the road God set before us alone. We need to walk in relationship. There are those who might say to themselves, I am not alone. I have Jesus, and that is all I need. Well, this attitude does not fit with God and His creation. Just remember that Jesus was at the creation, being part of the Godhead, and he saw that it was not good for man to be alone. Apparently, a lonely walk with God is not good enough. He designed his human creation to walk in relationship and community. In order to experience the fullness of God's design, we must be part of a real community connection. Here at Neighborhood Church, Life Groups is the path of relationship we walk. In Life Groups, 
we are able to step out of our loneliness and intentionally engage the design of God. Living connected requires me to be known by God and others. The first epistle of John indicates that there are three parts to be known by God. Let's read. If we claim to have fellowship with him, yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live by the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus his Son purifies us from all sin. John teaches that we must walk in the light of God. But if we claim to have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Walking in the light means we face our sin and see it as God sees it. Therefore, a walk with God will require a continual confession and repentance. This reference also teaches that a walk with God will also include relationship with one another. Our relationship must make room for the confession and repentance needed to walk in the light of God. Therefore, we must learn to be transparent with each other. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. James taught that our spiritual healing is connected to the transparency we have with each other. According to James, the two elements of confession and transparency are necessary for the blood of Jesus to purify us from all sin. This is an important truth because sin frustrates our relationship with God. Therefore, the more we allow the blood of Christ to purify us, the more we walk in the light of God. It's possible to feel frustrated in our relationship with Jesus. We have occasional experiences with Him, but in the normal flow of life, we find ourselves in the same place, carrying the same burden or obstacle. We are stuck in a quagmire of self-doubt, not able to move forward in Christ. It's possible that we frustrate our walk with Jesus by not being connected to one another. According to 1 John, our growth in Christ is directly connected with the fellowship we have with one another. Psalm 90 makes an interesting observation. Let's read. Thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. The more we desire to know the Lord, the more we draw near to his light, and 
the light of God exposes the secret sin that festers in the darkest depths of our soul. Don't deny it. We all have secret sin. We work hard, really hard, to hide our secret sins from our brothers and sisters in Christ. But John made it very clear. Should we want to be free from the sin that frustrates our walk with Christ, we must embrace the light of God and the fellowship it requires. This twofold process is the reason why Alcoholics Anonymous and Celebrate Recovery has a clear success rate. It brings us into the light and allows personal connection to aid us in the healing process. Remember, coming to the light and having fellowship with one another is the path we must follow to cleanse our relationship with Christ from the secret sin that corrupts it. Why is being connected with each other such a big deal? Because it is where we experience the gift of fellowship and the purifying process continues. Fellowship is much more than the occasional church potluck. It is the relationship process started at the creation and continues to this very day. In the New Testament, there are three different Greek words used to translate the English word fellowship, but the most commonly used word is koinonia. The fellowship referred to in 1 John is the koinonia process. Koinonia is so much more than the occasional handshake at church. It is a partnership and participation with one another that goes beyond the occasional church potluck. Koinonia is a strong word that describes a deep partnership and commitment to each other in your social group. The word communicates a deeper involvement with each other than the occasional church potluck. Is the church potluck part of the koinonia process? Yes, but it's a small part. In Romans, Paul used the word to describe a collection made throughout Macedonia and Acacia to aid the poor saints in Jerusalem. In the epistle of 1 Corinthians, Paul used the word to describe the corporate fellowship we have with Jesus Christ as our Lord. He also used the word to describe the intimate connection we have with Jesus during the sacrament of Holy Communion. But most important of all, Paul used the word to describe the communion we have with the Holy Spirit. Why is koinonia fellowship part of the purification process? Because koinonia is the very heart of God. When we honestly partake in Holy Communion with the body of Christ, the symbolic blood of Jesus continues the purifying process in us. At the heart of kingdom connection is the koinonia process. It's a fellowship with God. People who claim to have fellowship with God but resist the koinonia process only deceive themselves and walk in darkness. The more 
we draw near to the light of God, the more divine koinonia compels us to engage in fellowship with the body of Christ. When we walk in true authenticity and genuine truth, we invite others to pass our barriers of loneliness and isolation, because this is what koinonia does. Living connected involves being a vehicle of God's love in the lives of others. We can never lose sight of the fact that we are part of the body of Christ. It is common to hear the expression, Got your six, friend. What does this mean? Nearly all first responders use this military slang it means that your partner has your back and is willing to protect you. Visualize a normal clock face numbered 1 through 12. 12 o'clock is your front position, while 6 o'clock is your back position. When your partner says he or she has your six, they are saying they will protect the part of your life that you cannot see. This kind of protection can only occur with koinonia connection. Paul admonished the Philippian church to nurture one another with the same encouragement they have received from being united with Christ. Let's read. If you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from His love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and purpose. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. If we have received any encouragement, comfort, love, or fellowship with the Spirit, then we should not be selfish with God's gift. We should be like-minded, having the same love, purpose, and oneness in spirit for each other. The key to koinonia fellowship is humility. We should strive to consider others better than ourselves. In simple terms, we should allow God to work through us and help others in their walk with Jesus. We should have your six, friend. Koinonia Fellowship requires us to make an investment in the lives of others. Living connected is much more than finding someone to be authentic with. It is finding someone to give your authenticity to. Just remember, Someone should have your six, and you should have the six of someone else. Living connected is a vital part of body life at Neighborhood Church. It's difficult to find connection during a Sunday morning service we must venture beyond these casual encounters. The body life we seek will be found in more intimate settings. Koinonia connection 
can be found in our life groups. In these personal settings, the false fronts can fall away and the real person can be found. Should you want to blend with the body of Christ at Neighborhood Church, then put aside your loneliness and join. A life group is waiting to develop koinonia connection with you. Just remember, we have your six.